Yeah, but I was talking to Jason, it's, it's a challenging Sunday. Uh, we've just had a big national political event. And uh, I said to Jason, I, I, I think maybe I'll come uh, to Aldersgate and tell them how they should have voted in the election. And he said, I love these people, I know these people. And if you did that, they would drag you out of that pulpit and, and kill you. I, I just, I know they would do that. So uh, I said, well, what am I going to do? And uh, Jason said, well, I have a unique suggestion. Why don't you like work from scripture and talk about God? And I said, oh, okay, I'll, I'll try that. And uh, so that's exactly what I propose to do. As Jason has reminded us, uh, however the election might have gone uh, or did go, uh, those of us who are convened this morning are convened not by the lords of this world, but, but by uh, Jesus Christ. And, and whoever we would have elected or did elect, uh, we, we still uh, answer to the one who has elected us. And thus I bring you to my scripture from Romans 5. Uh, put it in context. Paul, we figure reading between the lines, he's got a divided church. He's, he's got a church where there's some people who have like been there their whole lives, uh, Jews, Jews who know the scripture, Jews that know they're part of Israel, and they believe Jesus Christ is the long-awaited Messiah. Scriptures foretold. That Israel is God's means of salvation. Well, but surprise, you have these pagans, these Gentiles, start showing up. And they say that they believe Jesus Christ is their Lord too. And we've got a lot of ways of explaining about why we Jews, those of us who have been here for a long time while we're here, but, but why are they here? And in response to them, here's what Paul writes. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though maybe for a good person, uh, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us. In that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. More than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, if you've ever wondered to yourself why a nice person like Jesus was crucified, I think it's in great part because people like Paul said things like this about Jesus. Jesus Christ died for good people who know the scripture and who volunteer and do good works and social attitudes are all clean. No. Jesus Christ died for sinners. Only sinners. I think that's why he ended up on a cross. It wasn't that he was there because some people claimed that he was the Savior. No, he got there because he saved the wrong people. Jesus Christ saved people that people thought nobody could save. He saved people that nobody wanted saved. We, the Gentiles. Paul says that's the great claim. Later, when Paul says, about ten chapters later in Romans, he says, You welcome others, 
the same way you got welcomed by God in Christ. That, that this affirmation is the basis of like Christian ethics. You, you've got on your altar the word welcome. And that word is there. It's a, it's a key Christian word because, well, we got welcome. John Wesley preached on this text, Romans 5. And after the sermon, he was kicked out of the church in which he was preaching, this parish church in England. And Wesley wrote in his journal that night, There is no more life-giving or repugnant word than this word. Christ died for sinners. At the right time, Christ died for people that are trying to make progress in their lives and see where they've gone wrong and want to go. No, for the ungodly. While we were enemies, He did not wait for us to come to Him. He came out and got us. And Wesley says you can get kicked out of just about any church for preaching such news as that to the church. Uh, and so Wesley preached salvation for all. And some heard him gladly, but interestingly, all the people who heard him the most gladly <laughs> were those outside the church. Well, I, but there's just something about being in the community of faith that leads us to be misled into thinking that we're here because, well, though we're not the best person in the world, we, we still at, at least have a spiritual sensitivity. We, we at least try to do right, and we, we at least repent, we at least believe. No, Christ saves the ungodly. Uh, this, this text really came home to me back when I was in Alabama, went out to a youth rally on a Saturday night. And there at 9 p.m. on a Saturday night, 500 screaming teenagers in this edgy rock band. And the sermon was delivered by Duffy Robbins, who years taught youth ministry at Asbury Seminary. And Duffy read this text from Romans 5. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For the enemies, why, well, I mean, you might die for a really, really good person, but he shows his love for us and that he died only for bad persons. And then Duffy said, Now, <clears throat> I need your help for a little skit on stage. To my right is really good righteousness. To my left, at the other end of the stage, is bad, unrighteous. Now, when I call your name, I want you to come up and position yourself along this continuum about where you best fit, on the really good side or the really bad side, okay? Okay, first person I want to come up, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, you, come on up. You. And a teenager came up and, of course, took her place on the righteous side. All right, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., come on up. And Mother Teresa welcomes Martin Luther King on the righteous side. Uh, okay, uh, John Wesley. Yeah, okay. Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King, welcome John Wesley. Uh, now, Genghis Khan. Okay, goes left. Joseph Stalin. All right. There they are hanging out on the left. Uh, Adolf Hitler. Yeah, come on over to the left. Good. Okay. And, and so it went. Called about 20 kids on stage little group on the right of the righteous, little group on the left of the unrighteous. And he said, now we need to call it one more person up here, Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, you be Jesus Christ. And a young woman came up and, and uh, she was welcomed graciously by Mother Teresa and, and uh, John Wesley. And so Duffy said her, are you okay with kind of how we got everybody placed now? Got everybody placed right? Okay. Do you people not listen to anything 
you must be having trouble in school. Let, let me read this text for you once again. And he read this from Romans 5. Christ died for the unrighteous, for the ungodly, for the rebels. And as he was reading, Jesus sort of sheepishly moved over, a little more to the left, a little more to the left. By the end of the reading, there was Jesus hanging out there with Joseph Stalin. And then Robin said, is there anybody here tonight with the guts to go with Jesus? To walk with Jesus as he goes into your school on Monday morning and to talk to the people that he talks to, that he died for. And as the band played, the kids streamed down to the front, just dying to be part of this outrageous gospel. Uh, I tell you, this is, this is the great truth of our faith, but also, let's admit it, it's a great challenge. I mean, look at the people seated next to you on the pew this morning. I bet you can believe Jesus would die for you, but for them, uh, it, it can be a challenge. I mean, obviously you've never served on the church finance committee if you don't really feel that. Um, thus, when I was asked back in Alabama, hey, Bishop, what, what's the difference between your life like as a college professor, chaplain, academia, and your life now as a bishop, as a church bureaucrat. What's the main thing you miss? And I thought about that, and then I said, you know, the main thing I miss about my life at Duke, as opposed to my life here, the main thing I miss is the Duke Office of Undergraduate Admissions. They were wonderful. Through their vetting efforts, they ensured that I spent all day, every day, with people just like me. Oh, they had different races and different gender and all, but basically, they, they all had been selected because they thought and acted and agreed with just like me. And it was wonderful because we'd have the best discussions and everything, and they had all been as successful as I at manipulating the American educational system to my personal advantage, and it was wonderful. Uh, but in the church, Jesus won't let us have an admissions committee. we got to work with anybody he drags in the door. And you won't believe some of the people he talks to. And it's a, it's a challenge. I served a church in Durham couple of years ago, the bishop asked me, can I fill out at this church, fill in there for just a couple of months. I was there for over a year, which tells you something about the trustworthiness of bishops. Anyway, to get started at that church, I interviewed every lay leader face to face. And I remember one morning I interviewed three different men in succession, middle-aged men. And I, one of the questions I asked everybody was, what would you like to see Duke Memorial United Methodist Church do better? These three men in successions, every one of them said, we'd like to see this church be more open to LBGT people. I said, wow. I didn't hear this a lot in Alabama from lay people, but <laughs> okay. All right. And um, well, the third person I talked to was a lawyer. And uh, he said the same thing. I'd really like to see us be more welcoming to LBGT people. And I said, well, how are we not welcoming? He said, I don't know, and I think we don't know. We need to find out. And I said, well, you know, <clears throat> I've heard this now from the last three people I've talked to, and you, a lawyer, uh, but help me with this. I just wondered why you feel this is important. Is this maybe... Uh, for you personally, an issue uh, because of your family or you yourself? I just Help me with this. Uh, why is this a concern for you and it, it's not a concern for a lot of other people? I just, but, and he said, uh, 
I guess uh, Jesus. And I said, you're a lawyer. I can't believe. Anyway, uh, wow. So Paul says to us, you've been welcomed by God. You welcome others as you've been welcomed. We just had a, an election, if you noticed. And, uh, but we, the most important election we had was a long time ago, and on a Friday afternoon, we, were, er, we were, got to vote. And remember, we're the ones that voted for Barabbas. And then the same God that we crucified turned right around and voted for us. All of us. And, and that's, that's the Christian politics under which we live. And it, it is both the adventure of this faith and a great challenge. Uh, and, and so it's good to get together and be reminded that that being someone being brought into the kingdom of God is, is more determinative of how we think and who we are and how we act than, than being an American. Uh, and what a God we've got Who's, who salvation for all. That was the message that got John Wesley in so much trouble. Um, years ago, uh, we were in a national crisis with the uh, country of Iran, and uh, I was doing some business with a woman that she was a secretary in, in the university. And after I had uh, made arrangements with her, the, uh, she said, oh, by the way, before you leave, if you got any household work, any chores, that you need somebody to help with. And uh, I said, uh, why do you ask? And she said, I got a graduate student. Well, he used to be a graduate student. Now he's lost his scholarship and he's no longer in the university. But uh, anyway, this kid is in bad shape and really needs some help. And my husband and I have invited him into our house to live with us and uh, trying to get him back on his feet. And I'm trying to get people to hire him uh, to give him work. Uh, and said, I got to know him here at the university with a student labor pool. And I said, my goodness, but, but who is he? And he, she said, he's from, he's from Iran. And he was here as a graduate student. But after the revolution, he's lost all of his money. And he's, he's illegal here. And he can't get a scholarship from the university. And uh, so, so he's in a mess. And I said, well, what does he think about that Islamic re revolution? And she said, oh, he thinks it's just great, thinks Khomeini is just wonderful. And I said, really? Wow, and you and your husband have taken him under your wing, and you're busy trying to find him work, and he's living with your family? And she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, wow, uh, <clears throat> you know, I would be interested to know how you... Uh, got involved in this kind of work. How, how did you come to do this? And she looked at me, she whipped off her glasses, she pounded her hand down on the table and she said, because I'm a Christian, darn it, you think this kind of thing is easy? Oh. Uh, it's not easy. But we believe here is life and that eternal. Amen.